Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and you know what? It's been a really, really busy week for War of the Visions. Trust Stones, been working on those. FF6 characters, been working on those. And I think a lot of other people have too. But this coming Wednesday, we are getting a Master Ability 2 upgrade for four of our old units, including the OG, the original, everybody re-rolled for this character at the beginning, Medina, that you see on the screen over there. And like, if you're new, she was the rage at the beginning of this game. Like, every guide that you watched, every comment that you read was like, yeah, look, there's a lot of good units, but you need to make sure you get Medina, because, like, she has AoE damage, mostly her limit break, which is instant cast. And that was, like, awesome back in the day. And to be fair, she was a great PvE unit, a great farmer for all of us. So I'm just taking a few seconds right here to honor her memory and honor the memory of all the time lost by people re-rolling for her on day one. Lost but not forgotten. Anyway, what's her master ability to going to be? We can give her another, you know, we'll give her a moment again and talk about her upgrade. So, Originally, Medina's master ability was magic up 30%. And for a day one unit, this is a dang good mastery, right? Just more damage. Who doesn't want that? It's wonderful. And then her TMR Kaleido Moon has a really good buff on it. Acquired AP up 50 for three turns with an attack and magic steroid is really good, especially for PvE when you're trying to build up enough AP to chain down a boss or something. The big problem with Medina, because like on paper, Medina looks real good. So when you dig into her a little bit that she falls short. Kaleido Moon's an armor. Uh, like there it is. Right there, right? It's an armor. I, I don't know. You tell me. Anyway, let's look at her master ability upgrade. Uh, she is getting Cosmo Plume, her limit break. Her signature move is getting an upgrade. We'll go look at that. She's getting the Ice HP and Ice Attack buff for her group. That's nice. The Magic 30 becomes Magic 40, which is pretty cool. And then she's getting 20 Magic Resistance. She's always been a unit who's good against other mages, so that's pretty cool. But let's look at her... Um, Let's look at her kit a bit here, and let's go to the bottom and look at her limit break, because this is getting upgraded. Previously, it was this. Decrease ice resistance of the mobs, or the units, 38% who hit, and then deal 200% damage to them. And again, the cool thing about this was, it was a big AoE attack at a time in the game when there wasn't a bunch of these, and it was instant cast. Now, it costs 69 AP, which is hilarious and expensive, so what's the upgrade? AP cost stays the same, debuff stays the same, damage stays the same. The upgrade is it gets one more range and one more range height. Previously, it was a range 3 ability. It's now a range 4 ability that extends all the way out to 6 if you go to the tip of the big AoE, and it would only hit range height 1. It now hits range height 2. This is a nice little quality of life thing here, um, and it, it it throws back to the days when people would build Medina bomb teams, that their whole team comp was built around like, make Medina fast, she runs at the enemy team, limit breaks them, probably kills one or two, and then dies, but it doesn't matter because she like nuclear exploded your team. Those days are behind her, I think. That buff will not increase that enough to make her viable again. And if we look at her stats, if you go down to the bottom of her stat page, you can see right here, her total stats, max level and max job, She's got 2,731 HP as a UR unit. Let me just tell you, none of the rest of the units we're looking at are URs. They all have significantly more HP than that. Yes, 45% magic resist is cool as like a base. Like, I don't think Medina's Master Ability 2 hooks her up enough. So that's Medina. And you know, again, pour one out for our original girl with 25% magic resist and negative 20 to every physical resist. Once the Medina bomb goes off, she also dies. Rest in peace, Medina. Okay, let's go to Sir O. Sir O is also getting his Master Ability 2 upgrade. And I'm on his stat page right here because I wanted to show you something. He's an MR unit. Look at that, 2747 HP. Now, that's not much more than Medina. And it's just a little bit more. But he's an evade unit, right? He's an evader. So let's go look at this character and see what he's got. His original master ability was attack plus 20% evasion rate 15. So instantly, this is pretty good. And this is, by the way, Dr. Diggs' favorite character in the game. Here, we can even zoom in a little bit more. Um, this is his favorite character. Now, is he super usable? Uh, is lightning evasion playable? Not really. But his master ability too is good. 
he gets HP up 10% for his Lightning Allies and Paralyze Resist 25% for Lightning Allies. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, he gets Attack up 20%, that stays the same. His Evasion Rate goes up to 25. So sitting at 25 Evasion from just the Master Ability is cool. And I'm going to look at the rest of his kit here in a minute and show you. You can get a ton of Evade on this guy now. He also gets 20 Defense Penetration. So, uh, as far as Master Ability upgrades go, I think they did Sir O right. Um, they gave him what he needs, and let me show you what I'm talking about. If we go to his skills here, he has ways of really, really juicing up his evade. In an environment now where with trust stones, you can get a bunch of it. So he has an agility luck pass it support ability. You need both of those stats for evade. He also has an evasion attack up stat. So he can hit all of his relevant stats, attack, evasion, agility, and luck with his support ability. That's really cool. Then his EX buff was also uh, pretty good to him. Uh, he gets Swallow upgrades to Speedy Swallow, so his long range single target attack also is an agility buff for him, that will help him dodge. And then, he got the rare, um, sub job EX upgrade with his Samurai sub job here, where Virtual Image, this is the, uh, this is the group AoE um, evasion buff that units have, and this is the JP side of the site, right? So it's not actually called this in global. Look at what it does now. It still gives the 25 evasion to your allies, but it gives him 50, 50. This dude can stack evasion. And if we go back to his stat page right here, 64 base agility is nice. For, a, for, an M, for an MR unit. And 228 luck is nothing to like shake your head at. 466 attack, like on paper, Sir O seems like he should be pretty decent. The problem is you gotta watch out for 100% hit attacks. And with 2747 HP, he's just slightly tankier than Medina. And then you look at his resist, you're like, he's actually a lot tankier than Medina. Rip Medina. That's like the theme of this video. Anyway, that's Sir O's Master Ability Upgrade. I do think it's a good one. I don't think it makes him necessarily playable yet, but if you're thinking about something like Lightning Selection Quest, he might have enough evade with that buff online to like really dodge a bunch of stuff and might be able to pull some Shadow Links like shenanigans. It might be something worth trying if you're looking into it. Now, now we got the big man himself. We've got Baylo coming in next, and Baylo is a defensive powerhouse, and I mean the stat defense, and that's all that I mean, but let's check it out. So here's our guy. His original master ability was agility up 10% and luck up 30%, and you're like, cool, is he an evasion unit? No, no, he's not an evasion unit. This master ability makes no sense, but it does get an upgrade. So he keeps the agility 10% and luck 10%, which is fine, right? He, he gets some accuracy out of luck to be fair, and the agility helps him not be as slow as he looks. But defense 10, spirit 10. Ah, he's supposed to be like an SR kind of earth tank. 10 defense and 10 spirit makes sense. And if we dig into Balo a little bit, let me show you something that's gonna make Medina people sad. His HP, at a total stats, max level, job level, is 36.35. Literally like a thousand more than Medina. He has 445 attack, which for an SR unit's pretty good. Um, 40 agility is bad. So like, even though he's getting agility from his master ability, his base is so low, it only boosts it up to 40. So that kind of sucks for him. He does have 10 spirit from his new master ability and then 24 defense before applying any of his skills. And if we look at Balo's skills here, like we go to the top, he has this, uh, his HP up level one from the night job, which is normally not something you run very much, becomes really good. 15% HP, 12 defense, 12 spirit. The problem is you have to dig into his EX jobs to get this, and not a ton of people are willing to invest those resources into Balo. Um, so you actually have a very nice setup here though. If you ever were just like wanting to invest into Balo, maybe for cost restrictive formats, where his 40 cost could allow you to run some really strong other stuff, and then you could give him a bunch of speed, you could run Immortal Secret plus Plowden's Blessing to give him 27% more HP, 24 more defense, and then 12 spirit. That's a lot of you know defensive stat stacking for a very cheap unit, and maybe in some limited formats, he might see some play. If we kind of look at the rest of his kit, Knight, I think for PvP is pretty weak. 
Um, I don't love it. He does get Trinity Burst, which is a semi AOE massive debuff he can cast. It says it hits pretty hard, but again, he's an SR unit, so it's not going to scale that well. He does have Drain Blade, so he can absorb damage to heal himself, but again, it's based on your damage dealt, so I feel like it'll fall a little short. He has Breaks down in his night job here. It, it, like, he's got Paladin. So he does have a Mortal Fighting Spirit, which for PvP, if you can get this guy to gather aggro, he could be an annoying thing for your opponents to deal with, especially um, he would have to go attract blade in with a mortal spirit online, and you could run like a sub VC um, vow of love, for example, to help him generate some hate, and then hope he generates enough AP to start dropping attract blades. So that's Balo. That's his upgrade. He's an SR unit. They're not supposed to be strong, but there might be some limited cost situations where you might want to use them for Earth. Now, Zazan the uh, cheapest unit in the game. The only normal rarity unit we got, cost 20, so running him enables you to uh, you know, run almost anything else you want in limited formats, especially if the cost limit is only restricted to unit cost. His previous master ability was perfect for him because he's kind of a troll, at least the way people have used him in the past. Dex 15% is kind of whatever. It does help him crit and gives him a little accuracy. Move one, jump two. This dude gets around the map. All of that stays the same, but they give him Human Killer on his Master Ability upgrade. This is interesting because I think they might be trying to encourage you to play Zazan in a way that isn't just charm the enemy. Because a lot of times Zazan's use to this point has been in a, like a lot of manual limited situations where you just have him, he has a million move, and he runs at the enemy and charms somebody. Okay, now, if we look at his kit here, though, he has a lot of human killer abilities, so they're really trying to encourage you to stack that up. Um, knowledge of the Thief, this is definitely something you want to run on him. Move plus one, agility 12% is really good for him. Then you run something like Attack Up, I suppose. Oh, we just had somebody follow on the Twitch channel. Thank you, uh, Dostness. Appreciate that. Um, but then look, if we look at his kit, you'll see what I'm talking about. He has all these moves, like Be Careful, right? Which is a 40% attack steroid that upgrades into a, a group 40% attack steroid and group human killer buff. Pretty neat. Like, human killer kind of leaning into his thing here. He has Killer Blade, which turns into Murder Blade, which is a 300% modifier scaling attack with 25 human killer on it. Okay. That's kind of cool. And so you can see that they're really trying, here's another human killer, to give him more of that here to encourage people to play him not just as a charm bot. Maybe it's something you do, right? And if we look at his base stats down here at the bottom, uh, 3602 HP, again, just drinking in the tears of the UR Medina players when the normal rarity unit has a thousand more HP than you do. 42 agility for an in rank unit is great. A decent amount of dex, low luck, so his accuracy is going to struggle, right? But 380 base attack. If you can somehow get his attack to a reasonable amount and just stack those killers, maybe there's a world where this guy actually is, like, doing his thing. Mostly, though, people run him in Thief Subjob for Steelheart, which is a charm. So you max his faith, you run him as a charm bot. That's the way Zazan's normally played. I don't think this will change that. Unless you find yourself in a situation where uh, people are running charm immunity and you just need to be able to do some damage, he'll do a little more, and that's the upgrades. So those are the Master Ability 2s we're getting. That's a little bit of analysis on those old characters. Again, Medina, I remember the day. That's all I got to say. All right, guys, have a great day. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.